In season five, we have three choices for shotguns. The charge, the tactical, and the newest of the bunch, the dragon's breath. But the question is, out of all three, which one should you carry? We're gonna answer that in this video, but first, Epic surprisingly gave a considerable buff to the charge and dragon shotguns on Friday, which honestly makes them both way more viable. But still, do they beat the ever so trusted tech? They just might. So we're gonna start by analyzing the buffs they gave, then we'll get into the pros and cons of each shotgun. Make sure to stick around because by the end of this video, you guys will have a much better understanding of where each shotgun sits in the current meta. And hopefully, we'll be able to answer which one is truly the best in season five. But quick, comment down below your favorite shotgun of the season. And yo, let's get into it. All right, so let's first talk about the shotgun buffs. These just went live on Friday, and according to Epic, all rarities of the charged shotgun now deal more damage while also having one extra ammo capacity. That means that the green and blue rarities now carry four shots, and the purple and gold ones carry five. Not only that, but they also made it so that they reload just barely faster. Not as quick as we'd like it, but honestly, considering that ammo count and reload time were some of the most common complaints with the charge, this is a very welcome change. If we look deeper into the details provided by the leaker Hypex, the actual damage increased is pretty minor, about three or four damage a shot if you manage to hit all 10 shotgun pellets. And that might not seem like much, because it isn't. The green charge still does barely under 200 to the head with a full charge. Blue and higher do over 200 with a fully charged headshot, and gold now deals just over 100 with the non-charged shot to the body. Okay. So what about the buffs to the Dragon Shotgun? Well, it's only been around for a few days at this point, but it seems Epic really wanted to spice it up even further because the damages at close, medium, and long range were all increased significantly. The purple version now does 152 damage to the body and 190 with the headshot, whereas the gold does 160 to the body and a clean 200 to the head also changed was the classification of what close, medium, and long range are. So now, you can be quite a bit further away from your target without having to worry about significant damage drop-off. I mean, just look at the medium range changes. The damage is way higher, almost double what it was before. So this is definitely a massive buff to the Dragon's Breath shotgun. Fusro da! Dragons are getting it, y'all. Now, all these buffs are pretty insane, but still, how do the shotguns stack up against each other? Before we answer that, if you guys want to save time and stay ahead of the curve, just click up here to visit Pro Guides, where you can hire a coach to teach you all the secrets to using all these shotguns effectively and check out our brand new Clicks Master Course. Link is in the top right corner or down below. Now, on to the pros and cons. First and foremost, there's a tighter pellet spread, meaning it has the best range out of all shotguns. You can stand a lot further away and still land a lovely headshot for max damage, whereas the other two shotguns don't even come close. And I would say this makes the charge excel for specific build battle scenarios, like situations where players keep their distance and trade cheap shots. Another advantage is that the design of the charge really suits it for team modes. For instance, in trios, one player can charge up their shot at an enemy's wall while the other two help replace it so that when they open it, they can get a fully charged shot off immediately. In that sense, the charge has something going for it that it doesn't have in solos. But one last advantage is the sound that emanates when you hold a charge, which does a terrific job at scaring off aggressive players and making them think twice about peeking or editing on you. Yeah, you hear me rumbling, bro. You want to charge to the face, dog? I didn't think so. All right, what about the cons? Well, the most glaring flaw of the charge is its slow fire rate. Against attack, you're probably only gonna get one shot off while they get two or even three, which can put you at an enormous disadvantage if your aim isn't the crispiest. Also, there's the awkward click timing because of the charge mechanic. Many of us are still used to the shot going off when we press our trigger, not when we release, and that causes a lot of us to shoot the charge way slower than we should. Now, you could double tap your fire button to get past this hurdle, but without that, unless Unless you really get used to the timing, the charge is just so more awkward to use. And lastly, this is something that you can't really notice when you just look at the numbers, but 90% of the time, you won't even get a fully charged shot off. 
I mean, think about it. A lot of our play styles revolve around peeking with quick edits, and you don't really have time to charge up your shot with that. So the whole building mechanic, or at least the way a majority of us are used to playing it, doesn't really allow for the many max charge shots, unless your peaks are on point. Let me know what you guys think, but to me, this is definitely a considerable drawback. Moving on to what the tactical shotgun has going for it. Firstly, it has the fastest fire rate of all the shotguns, and I can't stress just how crucial that can be. It makes missed shots less punishing, and I know we're all guilty of missing our shots. It happens, dude, all right? Just relax. Also, it holds eight shots and reloads the quickest, which is easily one of the best things it has going for it. It doesn't feel like you're always running out of ammo or needing to reload, whereas we tend to get that feeling a lot with the other two shotguns. And to note one final advantage, the attack is better at damaging enemy structures, especially the purple and gold rarities. Those are top tier at replacing builds or just shredding through them after they've been edited, making them extremely powerful for chasing down players in build fights. As for the downsides, went went. The only real one we would think of, and this is a big one, is its range. The tack hits like a dry paper towel unless you're right on top of your opponent. Beyond one and a half tiles away, it's just kind of weak, and that can make a big difference in the outcomes of your fights, especially if you don't properly play to the effective range. All right, now lastly guys, let's look at the Dragon Shotgun, starting with the pros. So burst damage is obviously huge in Fortnite, and the Dragon Shotgun excels in that area. Technically, it has the quickest one-shot potential, although that requires really close range and gold rarity to reach the 200 quick dead mark. But I mean 190 to the head with the purple ain't bad either. The Dragon's Breath is also one of the best shotguns to use if you're also carrying an SMG and like to get inside your opponent's box. But even if you're a tile away, you can still get a pretty meaty shot off, then use your SMG as a finisher. And although we haven't seen it yet, the Dragon's Breath might end up being the most potent shotgun for stack competitive endgames, since in those, there's usually like five players all right next to each other. Just like the double barrel was back in the day, if you can manage to sneakily take a wall or exploit into a box in the endgame, this is gonna help you get those impact frags that matter so, so much. Lastly though, we can't forget about the whole burn mechanic. Your shots will burn wooden structures, including player builds and even houses. The burn deals 10 damage a tick and ticks pretty fast. And when wooden builds are burning, they can't be edited anymore. So effectively, if you can piece control your opponent and get a shot off, even if they own some pieces, they won't be able to edit unless they built with brick or metal. Burn, baby, burn. Disco Inferno, burn, baby, burn. <laughs> oh my God, the shotgun's cool. Still, even with those interesting new mechanics, the Dragon's Breath has a lot of glaring flaws. The biggest one being the one shot you get before you need to reload. And it takes forever, like those old timey muskets or something, which of course makes you extremely vulnerable if you miss your shot. It's as if you're putting all your eggs into one basket with this gun. And while that's a good thing if you can hit your shots, most of us are going to find that challenging to do, at least on a consistent basis. Of course, another downside is the limited range. It's similar to the tack in many respects, but against a charge, you gotta be within one tile for your shot to even be worth it. And even the ammo requirement is really rough too. Four ammo per shot, which during an early game situation might actually have you running dry way faster than these other shotguns. And lastly, while the burning mechanic is an advantage, it can also backfire pretty easily because stuff is definitely gonna get lit up in fights. And at times, you're not gonna be able to avoid it. You can build with metal or brick to prevent accidentally getting burned, but still, who wants to deal damage to themselves with their own weapon? Embarrassing, dude. Oh my God, this is worse than picture day. Oh God, absolutely no one wants this to happen. So this is definitely gonna bring its overall effectiveness down a notch. So. Looking at all of that, each shotgun seems to be designed for specific playstyles, effective ranges, and different use cases. But is one of them the best? Well, if we have to give it to one, it's gotta be the TAC. The TAC's tried and true. Most of us have experienced fighting with it already, and it's the most straightforward of the three to use. However, that doesn't mean the Charge or Dragon's Breath are downright terrible. Both clearly have good uses, and if you mold your playstyle correctly, they're not as horrible as you might think. 
In terms of ranking them in order of worst to best though, assuming you play to the strengths of each weapon as best as you can, we'd say it probably goes a little something like this. Green charge and gray tack are equal to the bottom. The green tack is slightly better than those. After that, the purple dragon's breath shotgun, then the blue charge. Moving up the list, the blue tack comes next. And after that, another tie, the purple charge and gold dragon. But better than those is the gold charge. And finally, the purple and gold tack sit on the throne as the best shotguns in season five. All hail the king, I love you tack. Of course, this is always subject to change. The season's still relatively new, so who knows? Epic might hand out some more buffs, or even better yet, players might start discovering new strategies and more practical ways to utilize these shotguns. But as for right now, that's where we're placing them. And just like that, that's it for the video. In our opinion, the TAC is the overall best option, but that doesn't mean the other shotguns suck. Really, what's more important is how you use them. The winner of a fight is going to be decided more by things like positioning, abusing effective ranges, and of course, whoever can just land more of their shots. So keep practicing, guys. Creative maps are key when it comes to getting used to using any new weapons, so definitely hit up the practice section. And we have a full shotgun tips and trick video coming up, so make sure that you like the video and that you're subscribed with the bell turned on so you don't miss it. Other than that, have an incredible day, and I'll see you in the next one. Wow.